Hello everybody, welcome to Cape Rugby TV. It's Wednesday night, nine o'clock. Nice to have you along. Hope you got yourself a nice cup of coffee. Uh, I know that uh, I've got mine to keep me nice and warm during the show. Of course, Wednesday night, Cape Rugby TV. Great stuff. Got this from Jerome, all the way from Kenya. Welcome back. This is what it's been waiting for once again, rugby on a Wednesday night. With me on the show, as usual, Morgan Newman. Hello, Morgs. Hello, James. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Lots of action tonight. Of course, uh, Community Cup, Super 15, Varsity Cup, Varsity Shield, the whole lot. Are you ready? I'm ready for it, Jeff. It's been an awesome weekend and Monday night. So, yeah, looking forward to the show. No, totally. Jerome, I like it. Very good, JP. Uh, it was a great weekend for South African rugby teams. I mean, all the teams won their games. Um, uh, I don't know if um, the Kings are one of the South African teams, but the Sarks won against them. <laughs> I'm, I'm at that stage right now that, that, that um, I'll put a beep on that. Beep. Mr. H, how are you? Meneer, with me gaan het punt in even. Die kaap is weer Hollands and life is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed if you have a kaap, so klops a band or like for koop. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, well, anyway, it's time for us to get the show started now. Varsity Shield, of course, uh, is the first thing we look at. Let's take a look at some of the results in the Varsity Shield. It's been an uh, action-packed couple of days. Of course, there was a buy for... Um, some of the teams, but TUT losing to uh, Fort Hare, 25 to 18, and CUT, a good win for them, 50 points to 20 over a KZN. Jerome, CUT would have come away with a win like that over KZN. We saw their performance against, um, against UWC. They're strong, they've got a powerful pack. Kind of a result you would have expected, huh? Yeah, I think it's a great result for, for UWC, which means that UWC is still, still in the mix now. They just need to win their two games. Uh, next Monday they play uh, um, KwaZulu Natal in yeah. Peter Maritzburg. So they need to get points there. And then the week after they play um, Fort Air at uh, UWC. So hopefully they can get points. And um, we were hoping that, that CUT won all their games, which they've done so far. So it's good for us. So we can uh, UWC can still end second. CT top of the log, they are going to want to protect that position. Um, wh what do they need to do to stay top of the log? They just need basically uh, need to win one more game, and I think they'll they'll stay top of the log with the points they've got so far. And as I said, I think UWC has got a chance now to move to second place if they win their two games. They've got Helgard Miller helping out a little bit there. But, uh, uh, last week, I mean, last week was an interesting scenario. Peter De Villiers on the one side, Elkhart Miller on the other side. Some good coaches there. Yeah, there's really some good coaches in this Jerome comp Parr, Jerome comp Parr, comp as well. Obviously, yeah, yeah. obviously, <laughs> obviously I mean? JP. Um, yeah, so there's good coaches in this. Uh, um, <laughs> they've got also like uh, um, uh, Fort Air has got a good coach in Alfred Fana. His yeah. uh, coach has been around. So there's quite a, quite a lot of experience in uh, Lofi Ilo's brother is coaching at TUT. It's not going too well there, but he's there. So yeah, all the coaches there and then the coach of uh, KZN, uh, who we play next week, is, you know, Clinton van Rensburg who play. Yeah, of course, Sean, yeah. Sean van Rensburg. He's, he's, his brother is coaching. He's also quite experienced. So yeah, quite there's quite a good uh, few good coaches in this competition. Yeah, no, this, yeah, we've certainly got some skills coming during the varsity cup, and I'm sure that not only the players that are looking to, to progress their way forward, but uh, coaches looking to get uh, maybe provincial contracts or, 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 or so forth. Um, I mean, if we look at a guy like Morgs in your case, I mean, a, a varsity cup coach before, Sean Rue, great skills, etc., and look where he is now. He's helping out with, with SA Rugby's um, brains trust, so to speak. Yeah, look, James, I think that's one of, the, one of the big things that African rugby is working on is the fact that they're trying to get you know, progression for coaches, you know, through the ranks. I think too often we see guys that are just coming out of the blue and coaching, coaching top teams or extra rugby players all of a sudden coaching. Whereas I think this is sort of a good stepping stone, you know, to go from Community Cup, say, to Varsity Cup, or from Varsity Cup to a Vodacom Cup side and then to a Curry Cup and then sort of national level. So hopefully the same way that the players progress, the coaches can progress. I think we see too often coaches, you know, just coming from being players and being sort yeah. of, you know, coaching very low down to coaching the box and, well, and, and so on. I've got to just say to you, um, I see you've got yourself a, a glass of water there, so, so cheers, Mills. <laughs> uh, cheers, Abby. <laughs> one for you, yeah, one for me. Um, but now, uh, Morgs, if I can just, if you can just put your hands in front like this and just tell me how big was that fish, if you can just show me. 
Uh, Yo, how big was the fish? Which fish, Jeffy? Yeah, well, if you put your hands like this, and then just show me how big was the fish. Not so big, Jeffs. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to knock that glass of water off the... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, away from fishing and back to rugby. Mr. H, a good rugby weekend. Yeah, question to Jerome. If UWC lose both their games, is there a possibility that they could end last? Well, UWC at the moment, they are six points. They got six points. Uh, hang on, how many points have they got? 12, 12 points. <coughs> six. And TUT has got eight, eight points. Uh, points difference, uh, if TUT get uh, four points and UWC don't get any points, then we'd be on the same. But point, points difference, they can't be last, Mr. Eight. But they can win both their games. They can win, which they will do. They will win I'm all. I'm talking about TUT. I mean, T that, yeah, if they win both their games, then, then, then they go past UWC. That would not be acceptable. Yeah, that would not, not be. Right, folks, I'm going to just have to interrupt you because it seems like this conversation has completely gone off the wall. <laughs> not with Ma the coaches that they have. Let's just bring you really back to fishing. Let's reel you back in here <laughs> because I think um, we, we need to keep we need to keep a little bit of focus here. What did you think of the rugby over, over, on, on Monday night? Varsity Cup, some action packed stuff there, but didn't always uh, go the way for some of the of the home teams. Yeah, no, but I mean, you know, the rugby is still very good. My my concern is, I mean, we are now in the in the you know in the closing stages of the competition, so yeah. everybody's making this sure that they stay, you know, on the winning side or that they get their matches. And I think some of the players also might play a little bit with more, you know, uh, circumspection and instead of uh, going all out. And they don't want yeah. to get hurt. They want to be in the finals and things like that. Do you that. think the guys are starting to look a little bit tired at the moment? Yeah, possibly, but I mean, if you look at the, the captain of, of Marty's, for instance, yeah, I mean, he, he had a brilliant game. Helmut. Yeah, so, yeah, they, they uh, I don't know, you know, sometimes one thinks that a double round towards the end becomes a bit long and drawn out, yeah. you know, but I mean, that's, that's how let's, it is. Let's take a look at the logs now in the um, uh, Varsity uh, Shield, of course, uh, some teams up, some teams down. And there you see CUT, 27 points. They're still firmly on top of the log with KZN on 16. Fort Hairs on 15 after six games. They've played six and uh, won three, and only three losses there. UWC on six, uh, they've uh, won two and lost four. So they uh, haven't done too badly, UWC, but when, it, when you look at it on paper, it doesn't look great. So UWC on uh, fourth place on six points, and TUT right at the bottom. Quite a significant points, negative points difference for them. UWC, uh, TUT there at least on six and uh, they're sitting on eight points. Right, folks, uh, it's time to take an ad break now. We'll take an ad break and when we come back, we'll take a look at the Varsity Cup. Lots of action in the Varsity Cup and we managed to catch some of the action scenes from the UCT match as well as the Marty's match on Monday night. We'll be back with you in a moment. Hi, I'm Bob Skinson and you're watching Cape Rugby TV. <laughs> Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Like the new Super Ace One Ton Mini Truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 kilometer three year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering, and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at Discam now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 33 GCC diet caps for only $3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only $4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest Discam now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Welcome back, folks. It is, of course, Cape Rugby time here on um, uh, Wednesday night. Nice, nice to have you along. Remember, don't forget to check, forget to check out our website, www.facebook. Uh, well, at least our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Join us there. Lots of interaction. 
and on Twitter at Cape Rugby TV. Um, it's time for us to now look at some of the Varsity Cup results over the weekend. Rather exciting, and uh, or at least not over the weekend, but on Monday night. So keep thinking that rugby is on a Monday night. Hooker against NMU, 39 points to 36 win for them. And it was a solid win for Tux 34-29 over FNBUJ. UCT, a draw for them against Shimlers. Things just not quite going their way. And a good win for Marty's, 48 points to 21 over Vitz. Um, Mr. H, you were saying that you, you managed to watch the game there um, on Monday night. Marty's, uh, they, they, they're consistent. They show their class. They stay on top. Yeah, I and I think, you know, as we say, they, they're going into the, the, the end part of the competition now. Mm -hmm. And they're making sure that they will have the home uh, semi-final and possibly a home final. And, uh, you know, it will be great for, for, for Cape, Cape Rugby, that yeah. final is in Cape Town. Morgs, um, you played for, for Marty's for a number of the years. Um, you're, of course, the player of the year there last year. And you've played in the Varsity Cup. I know you, you managed to wear those pink shorts a few times. Um, what do you make of, of Martins? What would be going on in their mind right now, knowing that you know they're tapering towards the end of the Varsity Cup? As uh, Mr. H said, the captain is looking strong. They they maybe seem to have a little bit of a wobble in the beginning of the season. Now they're coming out with some good away wins. Yeah, let's say I think that's what Stella Marshall will mainly be focusing on now. Is you know sort of I think they're building towards they've been guaranteed a semi-final spot. So. They'll be building. They'll definitely be building now. I think they made a few changes this past uh, Monday for for the for the game against against Wits purely because I think Wits are bottom of the table and didn't expect too much of a of a tough battle. And as you saw, they started very slowly. And in the second half, with a few changes and and Chris Russell obviously coming in and having a few harsh words with the guys, I think they came out and played some decent rugby in the second half. But yeah, I mean, I think for them it's generally just the case now of building towards towards that secured semi-final spot at home and. At Stellenbosch, they're a very difficult side to beat. So, with their strongest side that they can, they can field, I think any team going down to Danny Craven on, um, sort of in the next few weeks is going to have a tough time. Actually, I just don't see Chris Rousseau as the kind of guy that can, that can give a harsh word to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's like the most friendly, harmless oak I've ever met in my life. You know, he just doesn't come across that way. Anyway, folks, we've got a couple of clips for you for of the, ma the match um, and Marty's against Vitz. Let's take a look. <laughs> against UJ there, uh, action-packed match, and you can see why Marty's are the dominating force. We also managed to catch some of the clips in the match, um, UCT against Shimlers. It was a draw for them, 21 all. Unfortunately, UCT just can't seem to be getting that kind of momentum that they're looking for. Once again, an away match, even tougher on the road. Let's take a look.
Well, folks, uh, by, yeah, UCT just not getting getting off the ground there. Jerome um, uh, Schimler's tough tough team and UCT playing away, still not just really getting the momentum going. Yeah, JP, I think um, they would rather take their two points, um, getting their draw there, because it's always tough going to Bloemfontein and, and to get your win there. Yeah. And I, I think right from the beginning, the, the amount of injuries that UCT has got, um, they struggle to, to get a team together and things. Um, and a few of their guys are playing Vodacom Cup. So they struggle a bit, but I think they will be happy to get their two points there uh, out of Simlas because you don't just go there and, and win. So I think, yeah, with where they are, this is a season which they just want to get past. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the logs there then. Of course, we see um, on the logs, uh, Marty's uh, still on top, 28-21. Tux are on 21 points in second place. Pucker on 19. The UJ University of Johannesburg on 18 points in fourth place. NMU on 17. Schimler's on 14. Ike's down at the bottom on seven points. And Vitz on one. Morgs, what will um, the situation for UCT now? I mean, they clearly have no comeback at the moment to come back. The only joy of, of, of winning the... Um, winning the varsity cup what will we be doing for them from a morale point of view knowing that it's literally weeks away before we hit the the league stages of, of club rugby western province look at this stage james i think because um well, kevin foot will be the same coach for the going into the league i think he's probably looking at guys that are going to put up their hands now going into the league obviously they have a few guys that will come down that are you know, eligible to play varsity cup that will play in the league so those guys will be playing you know the guys that are sort of second second fiddle now but currently in in, in the pound seats We'll be playing their, playing their boots out, you know, just to try, and, to try and keep that spot going into the league. But it's a really difficult situation, I think. You know, I think it's, it's one of the cases where you kind of just want to get it over and done with right now and, and start moving forward and playing in a competition where you're actually still, you know, able to, to win and, and do well. Do you think that there's any, any, anything going on in their minds right now that maybe the, the varsity, uh, at least the club rugby stuff, is, is maybe easier rugby? <laughs> Look, I, don't, I definitely don't think the club rugby side is easier. It's purely because of the fact that... <laughs> <you're> so, <laughs> Everyone's laughing. <laughs> Look, I think you win in the club rugby is a very really different easy. game. I think you play against a bit bigger, heavier, older guys, but by no means easier. So yeah. UCT, will, UCT will be a force to reckon with them when the, when the, when the club, club season yeah. starts. Bro, you have to bring your back. What's your opinion on that? JP, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get tougher. <laughs> is it tougher? Yeah, no, they play against like bigger guys and experienced guys and things. It's not varsity cup where, so you know... Let me, I mean, let me ask you that then. How does it, what, would, what would happen to a team like Schimler's? Because I think a lot of people don't, would, would be asking the same kind of question that I have. If you take a, a, a team like Schimler's or Police or Dispatch and you put them in our Super League A, how do you think they would do? No, they will get threats. You think so? Yeah, I mean, if you look at like Ham, uh, Hamilton's, Hamilton's is there, they'll, they'll, they can beat any of these teams. Um, yeah. I mean, Marty's already there, Durbanville, Durbanville is already there, and um, <laughs> yeah. SK is already there. So we've got a tough, tough club competition, so, JP. So it's not up, easy. It, I mean, Mr. H, you, yeah. you've, you know the other unions quite well and how many clubs they've got. I mean, what, what do you think? Yeah, no, uh, that's what always happened previously with a hundred and odd scores, you know, it, yeah. it's club champs. So it's happening again now in this community cup. Yeah, we're going to take a look um, at that in a minute. The, the thing is that the Ikees in the club uh, club setup must play the Martis twice. They must play Durban Vols twice. They must play SK twice. <laughs> so, That's so, tough. So, I come in really in Morgs, yeah. <laughs> no, look, Chase, I think the big thing is that with Ikees is what, what has happened with him is, and uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I speak under correction, but with, with John Dobson that was the coach and that obviously won the Varsity Cup, he'd taken, he then became coach of the Vos, of the, of the, of the Vodacom Cup. And he's taken 90% of those players with him to the, to the, to the Vodacom Cup. So if you look at the Vodacom Cup side, they're sitting with about like 12 UCT guys. Hang on, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Jerome, how many UCT players in the Vodacom Cup? A lot. Uh, there's a lot, yeah. A lot. Okay, so carry on. So I think and that's where um, the UCT have lost their depth is now if you take those guys back, then you may have a different situation, you know, but because Dobson has felt that those guys are the, are the best guys in Cape Town for their positions. Yeah. He stay, he's drawn from them, you know, and now they end up having a lack of depth. And with the injuries that they've experienced, they're actually seeing themselves sit at the bottom of the Varsity Cup. Is that where they go now when they finish with the Vodacom Cup? Do they go back to their clubs, Jerome? The, yeah, those who, are not, um, who don't qualify to play under 21, they'll definitely go back to their clubs. But a lot of them, 
the thing is, a lot of the dead players got contracts with province, so that's why province got the first um, option on them to play Vodacom Cup. So that's why they play um, Vodacom Cup because they've got contracts with province. All right. So um, yeah. Anyway, so I think as you, I mean, so I think if there's something we draw out of there, that UCT is not going to have an easy ride coming back. They, mm -hmm. if, if they're battling in the Varsity Cup, and they, you say the Varsity Cup teams are not as strong as our clubs. And they're going to come back here and play stronger teams, the likes, as you mentioned, Hamilton's, Durbel, SK. I mean, some of those teams are, and some of the teams who are stronger this year. I mean, I think the team, one of the teams to watch out for this year is Alderberg. I think we're going to see some strong performances from them. Stage? Yeah, no, I mean, they, you know, those guys do their homework. I know that. Uh, you know. Yeah. And they will come back. With a bang. Yeah, with a bang. All right, with a bang, let's take a look at the uh, fixtures then coming up in the um, Varsity Shield. Of course, uh, we <coughs> see uh, the CUT. <laughs> yeah, they are firmly on top and they're playing against Fort Hay in the Shield. That's on this coming Monday. And then also away from home, it's UWC up against um, FNB UKZN. They are playing um, on Monday night at 7 o'clock. So make sure that you get. Um, Get up there if you can <laughs> to go and watch the guys play at the Peter Boysen Sports Park in Peter Maritzburg. Go and support <laughs> UWC in Peter Maritzburg. Let's take a look now at the fixtures in the um, Varsity Cup. Of course, there are also, of course, some um, interesting matches. It's um, UJ against Schimler's. Marty's up against Pucker. FNB NMMU against FNB Tux. And there we see FNB UCT at home against um, FNB Wits. Lots of FNB sides there. Remember, this is, of course, the Varsity Cup presented by, uh, well, at least the FNB Varsity Cup presented by Steinhoff. Time for us to take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at what's happening in the Community Cup. And, of course, on our side, we follow Durbel and SK Warmers and see how they're doing. We'll be back with you guys in a moment. Hi, I'm Kobani Bobo, and you're watching KBRAVY TV. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Like the new Super Ace One Ton Mini Truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 kilometer three year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering, and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at Discam now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 33 GCC Diet Caps for only $3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only $4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest Discam now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Welcome back to Cab Rugby, folks. Yes, of course, Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, and we're doing <coughs> the very best of Club Rugby, Community Cup, Varsity Cup, Varsity Shield, as well as Super 15 for those of you that haven't had a chance to see what the Stormers or Western Province or the Vodacom Cup are up to. Let's take a look now at some of your Community Cup results. There we see it. Falcom Row is losing to uh, Pretoria Police, 51 points to 20. The African Bombers a win for them, 34-19 over Police. Rudapurt, it was a win for them, 34-15 over the Crusaders. White River, a massive thrashing for them. Brakpan beating them 134 points to no. And of course, staying there in that pool, SK Warmers, it was a loss for them against College Rovers, as was predicted. Uh, Shishen losing to Dispatch 30 points to 20. Nordlikas losing 69-17 uh, to Rustenburg Impalas. And also Borneans 19-13 over Evergreen. Jerome, um, I mean, I know I said it as predicted, but uh, um, a, a tough match for Tigerberg. That, I mean, for SK Warmers, sorry. They, People expected that. Uh, everybody said this, this, uh, you know, this team came off an 86 run winning streak. But a, not a bad result on paper at the end of the day. No, they were, I've spoken to, to one of the coaches, they were, they were still in. Uh, they missed, missed a, a, a try um, in a few conversions, but they were still in for the game, which I think it was really, it was really good, good yeah. of them going there because they're a class side, uh, college rovers. You don't go there and just go play. How do you, Morgs, how do you mentally prepare yourself for a game like that when you go up against a team who's won 
86, 89 row, matches in a row. SK Woman's being a wild card as well. How do you mentally get it <coughs> right? Look, James, I think mentally it's, it's, a easy, it's the easy part because you, you know, you're going up against a side that hasn't lost in a while, so immediately the motivation factor is there. But I think with the Community Cup and it being on TV and all those kinds of things, I think there's an opportunity to do a bit more analysis now. So I think if SK Women has done their, work, their homework, they can go back and look and see the games that, that College Rovers have played on TV, analyze that, and go there with a, with a proper plan in place to try and combat some of, their, you know, some of their, their plays and that kind of thing. If you've got any advice for a player, yourself personally, having been in that situation already, you, you're a player playing at, at, at a high level, and you know you're going to... What, what's the personal advice you, you give to an individual at SK Women's? What's going through their mind? What, you, what advice do you give them for preparing for a game that's potentially so intimidating? Look, I think the best preparation you can do is during the week. So, you know, when you go to training, you've got to go to training and you've got to train like you play. I know it's an old cliche, yeah. but you really got to go down to every training session and for the hour, hour and a half that you spend down in the field, you've got to train, you've got to put in the work like you would do for 80 minutes on a Saturday. And then, that, then mentally, you know, the night before you, you have a good night's rest and, and mentally you know that you, your hard work's been done and now it's just a matter of implementing that for 80 minutes. Let's take a look at now at the, the logs in the Community Cup and see how everybody's doing there. There you see it's... Um, College Rovers that are in a top spot on 15 points. Dispatch are in second place. SK Women's in third, so not having done so badly there. Villages Worcester in fourth and Shishin on uh, fourth place. Of course, it was a buy for Durbel. So let's look at the uh, logs in Pool B. Um, and we're there you can see it's the police on top spot there. Durbel, uh, who had a buy over the weekend, um, they're in second place. And African Bombers are in third place with Velcom Rovers, Bloemfontein Police in the next spots there. Jerome, what is the big thing that the guys are going to be looking for over the, over the weekend? It's a big match for SK, but the bonus here is, of course, they've got all those home, hometown fans coming out to support them. Yeah, definitely, JP, and I, I think if they want to have a say in the competition, uh, fortunate for them, I mean, they're both on, on 10 points, so it's a home, home advantage for them. They, they just need to take the win there, and yeah. uh, it's really a bonus if they get their bonus points. So I think if they get the win there, then they'll, they'll pass, they'll be in second place. And uh, I think that's ideal for them. And uh, the same for, 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 for Durbanville also. I mean, they had a bye, so they would come out fresh and firing. And yeah. they might, might go to the top of their lock also. Mr. Ajay, have you a chance to speak to Jan Loops at Durbanville lately? How's he feeling? No, no, he's quite confident that they will make it into the playoffs, you know. Um, but it's tough. Yeah. You know, they very close there. The one thing that bothers me just about this whole thing, you know, the whole structure. Somebody, somebody in the competitions committee of SA Rugby must go and sit down and compare all these things. You now play three games in Cape Town this weekend. Last weekend, all three were gone. Or they didn't play. The Vodacom Cup played in Sierras. This one played there. And Durban, that one. Now this week... They, you know, you, you, you actually want to plan it so that, they, that it's staggered and people in Cape Town can go watch rugby every week or they don't have to split up the, you know, the support in three ways. So if, if one of these teams had to play away and two is here, that, that would be great. Yeah. But now every, and it happens, you know, even with the, with the, with the Varsity Cup also. The Martys play and the, and the Ikes play at home, both play at home. Same time. Yeah. You know. But isn't that quite nice? I mean, for the fans, if there's, uh, they can go each go to their home club. <laughs> no, but one would. I would like to see both. You know, the games. So. No, but I mean, a student isn't going to drive from Marty's across the UCT to watch the next game. Yeah, but you know, there's other people also that you must consider. You would go to two games on a night. Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. I Why think not? That, where the police roadblocks are going to be busy all night long. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see lots, no, of arrest, yeah. lots of arrests. I just think, you know, it would be much uh, yeah, no, more I mean, I, uh, uh, appreciated yeah. if, if, if people can go to it. So in game. other words, one sort of local yeah. game per night where all rugby fans can go to one game. Yeah. Well, I would like to see that because yeah. I'd quite frankly like to see at UWC that we start seeing UCT and Marty supporters come out to support yeah. UWC. At the same time, I'd like to see UWC supporters go out and support UCT or Marty's. And, and at the same clubs. time, if SK Wombers are playing the Community Cup and it's their game, then the Durbanville guys can get off their backsides and go watch SK yeah. Wombers. And the same for SK Wombers. If Durbanville's playing, yeah. get off your backside and go and support your home team. It's the same, it's the same like you say, Mr. H, with the, with the Vodacom Cup. Yeah. I mean, Vodacom Cup played against Boland, it's serious. Where 
I mean, near Newlands. They yeah. could have just changed the fixtures around and played their first game uh, um, at, at Newlands, yeah. at the stadium. Yeah, and then the second had, round, yeah, but, play. But, but, that wasn't so no, serious. No, no, no. If, if what Mr. H is saying about it wasn't the planning... Really, it wasn't really a serious matter. No, but I'm just... We're talking about planning now and, I and how they can serious. do... Serious. Oh, in serious. <laughs> oh, in serious gespeeld. I'm yeah. with you, yeah. Yeah. So what I, yeah, in serious, yeah. <laughs> it's serious, <laughs> but it's in serious. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm with you. Man. Seriously, I got you now. Yeah, okay. it's serious, but <laughs> <laughs> what I think is what Mr. H says. It's like yeah. this, someone who's doing the planning yeah. can do it a bit better. Better planning. Yeah. All right, folks. This is a seriously matter. Seriously, serious <laughs> matter for for the, like seriously. All right. That's of course um, the community cup. Let's take a look at the community cup fixtures. Uh, quite a lot. Of All right. There you see uh, quite there a lot of community cup fixtures. There it is. Um, SK Women's against the Spatch, as I said, in Cape Town. And will take on Valcom Rovers. Yeah, so it's going to be quite interesting. Um, friendlies. We've got a lot of club rugby friendlies coming up. Let's take a look at some of those friendlies now. Um, of course, if you're looking for Community Cup rugby, there you see it's UCT against Vix at uh, UCT. Panil Villages, um, or at least Panil up against Young Peoples. It's Belleville and uh, Belar. Scott's in take on Primrose. Clutis Villar against Titans. Esther Fear take on Elsie Shafir. Franschuk and Violets. Young Stars and Violets. Rocklands and Silver Tree. There's quite a lot of fixtures here tonight, uh, folks, that we're going through and, of course, getting ready for the club season. Clearly, Brackenfell take on Rangers, Kelsrum take on Lagunia, Hands and Hearts take on Never Despair. Who on earth is Never Despair? Grafontaine and Van der Stel and Milton take on NTK. That's where we're going to be this weekend, folks. We want you to come and join us. Cape Rugby TV goes out to Milton where they've got a rugby festival. Ishmael Dolly is the head coach there. So if you want to check out a lot of rugby, go and check out the game at Milton. Uh, a couple of teams there, at least five different matches starting early in the day. So, Milton, a good rugby day. And congratulations to the guys from Cryfontaine, Willie Collins and his team, for also putting on a fantastic rugby day there. And um, once again, to Gerald Brock and his guys at Scottsdean. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it. Stormers were playing over the weekend, and uh, we had to make sure we got some footage for the fans on that neck of the woods. Union Moore Rugby Day. Let's take a look at some of the um, information there. And there you see it is Union Mill uh, on the weekend in celebration of their 40th birthday this coming Saturday. Participating clubs NNK, Goodwoods under 20 and the Rebels, Cryfontaine and Van der Stel again, uh, of course, uh, False Bay Vets. Game kicks off at 10 a.m. in the morning. Super Rugby game will be shown live afterwards. So if you want to enjoy some good rugby after the action, and then you can stick around there and enjoy that Super Rugby on TV. Live band and uh, heavens, what would you know? Mr. H, what have they <laughs> got there? That. Tell us, what have they got at Milton? <laughs> jumping <laughs> castles. Oh, they've got <laughs> jumping castles. <laughs> well go. done to them. Well done. <laughs> well done to Milton. Yes, they certainly are turning on the entertainment factor. Talking about the entertainment factor, um, on Monday night we had another media, social media and sponsorship seminar at uh, Western Province Rugby. Uh, Mr. H, your opinion? I think it probably was one of the best that I've attended. The, the part where people shared, you know, their, their, their ideas was great. And I think we picked up a lot of uh, very good ideas that people can now go back and share those things amongst them. And uh, the attendance surprised me, you know, early season, and over 50 people attended the, the seminar. Yeah, yeah, Great. it was actually, it was, it was quite fantastic. So folks, uh, Mr. H just mentioned those tips at the media seminar, and, and one of the things we concentrated there on was entertainment. The more entertainment you have at your game, the more excitement your game, the more fans you're going to get, the more fans you're going to get, the more potential you have for revenue. But the two quick tips that we got there was one from Alice at Elsie Shafir, and as you know, Elsie uh, and Alice has turned entertainment and looking after the fans of the community into a, a first-rated experience. What she said was, when they do their little newsletters, what they do is they take that, news, that little piece of photocopy paper and they hand it out to 10 friends. Everybody gets one piece of paper and then each one makes uh, uh, 15 or 20 photocopies. Because of course some people don't have the, all of the resources or the money, but everyone then takes one piece of paper and makes 15 or 20 photocopies. When you put that together, it's 200. And then that gets handed out to the community. So a very smart way to pool your resources. And the other thing that we found out was from Carl and Kia at Brackenfell, what they did was in, send, in, 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 in terms of sending out their newsletter, which they do on the, um, on, the, on the email, was that they, because you can only send out a limited number, they shared it amongst the people 
people at the um, at the club and then each person would send to about 50 people in the database so if you had about 300 you would each send out to 50 or so and that went out your newsletter and then on asking Carla what kind of content you put in the newsletter she said because a lot of people ask the question of well what must I how must I write a newsletter and what must I put in the newsletter so it became quite simple. She, uh, we asked her, what do you put in the newsletter? And she said, very simply, I put in the newsletter what people always ask me. And what do they always ask? How much are my fees? When must I reduce, uh, renew my fees? Um, what time is the next game? Um, are we practicing on Wednesday night or on Thursday night? Those were the kind of questions put in the newsletter. And Mr. H, I what thought clothes, that, What clothes must we wear when we go Yeah, but you, 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 you can elaborate a little bit more. Uh, no, it was, it was fantastic to listen to what they have done there, you know. And uh, strangely enough, uh, the most input came from women. Yes. You know, they, they gave all the input as to what must be done. And I think clubs must look at that, you know, and find ladies in the community to assist them more. Well, I don't think they need to find ladies in the community. I think they just need to find more people in the community or just the more. It just seems that the ladies are more willing because there may be the men are too late. No, well, I think so too. Yeah. And they, but the ladies seem to have more ideas you than know, the as men. to how to do these things. Maybe the men are just, I don't know. Jerome, why do the men not have more ideas? Some men. Some men. Here we go. You see, Mr. H. Uh. Okay, maybe we'll find Ben there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, watch it. the guy from Violet here also had a lot of ideas. Yeah, Ria's uh, um, uh, Khan. Yeah, Rias. He, he had a few good ideas there. So. Yeah. We're proud to say that the Leisure Hotels are once again back with the Cape Rugby TV show. They were our sponsors now and supporters of the show for the past two years. Strand Towers is where the Leisure Hotels are, obviously. Quite happy to entertain you and any sporting uh, function that you're looking for. You want to get hold of the guys from Leisure Hotels. They've got fantastic rates at uh, the Leisure Hotels um, at Strand Towers. And I know that they quite often host various sporting federations. They are holding conferences at a very, very affordable rate. So do yourself a favor. Get hold of uh, Strand Towers as part of the Leisure Hotels group if you've got a club or someone out of town coming to visit. If you want to win yourself a night's accommodation, bed and breakfast, then all you need to do is uh, SMS the word leisure and your name to 33280. One night's accommodation, bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers. Get your cell phone handy now. SMS the word leisure and your name to 33280. And you put yourself in the mix to win for yourself bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers. All right, folks, it is now time for us to take a quick look at what's happening in the Vodacom Cup. Let's take a look at the results there. We see uh, it was the Sharks on Friday, 72-6 over the Bulldogs. It was Esfia Deer losing to the Free State, 31 points to 8. Pumas, 62-0 over the Falcons. Over the weekend, we also saw the Bullion Cavaliers drawing with Western Province, 17 all The Lions, 45-15 over the Leopards. The Bulls beating Krikwas, 40 points to 32. The Griffins, 50-14 over Limpopo. And the Pampas drawing with the Eastern Province Kings. Let's take a look at the logs now in the Vodacom Cup. And there we see the Pumas at the top. Griffins, Lions, Bulls, Krikwans, Leopards, Limpopo, Bull Bulls, and of course the Falcons are right down the bottom. That's in the north section. While in the south section, it's the Sharks at the top of the Free State uh, in second place and Western Province in third, followed by the Cavaliers, the Kings, the Pampas, the SVR Deer, and the Bulldogs right down at the bottom. Let's take a look at your Vodacom fixtures now over the weekend. If you want to go and check this out, the Falcons and the Lions, Leopards and the Bulls. It's the Free State against the Cavaliers. They're playing away in Bloemfontein, the Bulls and the Pumas in Pretoria, Griffins and Krikwas in Valcom. The Bulldogs take on the Eastern Province Kings in Umtata and uh, here at home it is Western Province who take on the Sharks at Cape Town or at least at um, City Park here in Cape Town. SVN here against the Pampas. Um, Mr. H, uh, once again, lots of entertainment in City Park. Nice with local people to come and watch um, the Vodacom Cup and uh, the Sharks. Yeah, and it's quite easy to get there. You know, I've had a lot of calls, people phoning in to ask, how do you get to City Park? Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, it's so easy. Yeah. It's like straight down Belgravia. Yeah, well, oh, just get onto the M5, take the Kromboom turn off. Yeah. And then you go into Thornton Road where City Park is. And it's yeah, quite yeah. But yeah, it, it would be nice, you know, it's always good. The, the Vodacom side has got a very good record at, at City Park. So yeah. I hope that things will t turn around for them. I see the Sharks had played a, a very good game last week. So uh, I think the, the, our Vodacom team will have to 
you know, they will really have to up their game. Yeah, look, um, I think one of the big things there is, um, look, I think it's going to be very exciting at City Park as usual, but as I said, we've got lots of games this weekend. We know Ronda Bosch has got a tennis tournament. Uh, Milderton has got a big rugby day there. And then the Vodacom guys are at City Park, so they think on the Sharks it's going to be a crackerjack match. But most importantly, if you are at City Park, when you finish with the game, you just cut straight down Belgravia, Wembley's, get yourself a Wembley's whopper, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Morgs, what's your favorite, what's your favorite chow at Wembley's? No, just Vienna and chips and Wembley whopper goes down like a home signal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Jerome? Mutton salome. Mutton salome. <laughs> Mistakes? Yeah, no, no, the mutton salome is Mutton salome. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Folks, there is no sponsorship or any involvement here <laughs> whatsoever with our show and <laughs> Wembley's, all right? But it certainly is one of those... It's not a bad idea, Jake. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> but it's definitely a favorite, a favorite of ours. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that I was at, at, um, at that specific location and I tweeted out, I'm at Wembley's having a chow. And somebody said to me on Twitter, stay where you are. I'll come and find you now if you're lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lost. <laughs> anyway, folks, time for us to take an ad break. But nice to be talking about some of the local haunts that some of us know. And uh, interesting to see some people still don't know where the best spots in Cape Town are. We'll be back with you in a moment. And then we'll take a look at what's happening in the Super 15. And we'll see you in a sec. I'm Tim Swill and you're watching Cape Rugby TV here in Greenpoint. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Like the new Super Ace One Ton Mini Truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 kilometer three year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering, and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at Discam now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 30 free GCC diet caps for only $3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only $4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest Discam now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Welcome back, folks. Of course, it is Wednesday Night Cap Rugby TV. Super 15 is what we've been waiting for now. It was a cracker of a match over the weekend. Let's take a look now at uh, some of the match comments. We managed to catch up with some of the Super 15 boys, the Stormers, back at Newlands after all these months. As I said, we caught up with some of the guys after the game. Exhausted, very tight for stuff. That's what that's what we live for. Yeah, very happy. Good first one, lots more to come. Yeah, very tough, proper rugby match, eh? Ah, very happy, man, very happy. Ah, this was a walk in the park. <laughs> Couldn't ask for a better day. The start of the Super 15 year by us, and we won. That's the most important thing. The Cape fans, we know they are they passionate. They're ecstatic and we're just as ecstatic. They love for these young boys putting it on the line and you could see today that um, these boys played with everything. They went out there, they put their bodies on the line and in the end the better team won. Certainly we got we had Nazim Kar running out here. You all know he comes here from Athlon area, played for, um, for a few schools and Primrose's Rugby Football Club and now he's in the Stormers. So what a, what a player and what an inspiration to the community. Yeah, but yeah, it was good. I thought the boys played well. We executed the plan well as well. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, they don't stop coming. Eh? No matter how far you are here, they don't stop coming. Like we saw there, they almost caught up to us at the end. Ja, dat was een lekker game geweest. Ik denk eerst de helft erbij goed gegaan. Volgens plan. Uh, tweede helft, ja, dat was zo op en af. Maar het was niet alles. Het was gewoon buiten de game. Ik moet zeggen, ik ga niet de kaart. Maar 
Met die stadig gebeur, so'n bietje uitgezet om met alles wat gebeur het, maar dan nou val een plek en die goeie mense wat my support en wat my bek, so alles kan nie voor hem te gaan. Thanks a lot. Absolutely brilliant win. Uh, it's taking time, it's a process. We will eventually get to the quality of, of rugby that we want to play. That's fantastic at Newlands. No way in the world will you experience this kind of support and thank you to all the support in the Western Cape. Well, thanks, Jobs. Uh, it's a long time ago and I've uh, paid off. Eh? It's always tough, not easy as you saw the scoreboard, but it's a nice one for us. Always happy to be back at Newlands. <laughs> Our folks, the guys were absolutely thrilled there. The Storm is back at Newlands. Victory for them over the Chiefs. They managed to pull off a win by two points, which was, of course, my prediction. Stormers by two over the Chiefs. And we'll have a chat with Morgan Newman about his prediction uh, for the Stormers um, uh, in the Super Brew competition in a minute. And we'll also ask Jerome how he did in the, um, in the Super Brew competition and Mr. Herman Abrams. And find out how they did in it. Let's take a look now at quickly something at the uh, uh, Super 15 results. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's the Hurricanes with one point win over the Crusaders. Ah, I think a lot of us got that one wrong. The Rebels lost to the Reds 23-13 and of course the Cheetahs 36-19. And as I said, they start to travel well. And the Brumbies 35-6 over the Waratahs as they retain some of their momentum. And there you see that two-point win for the Stormers 36-34 over the Chiefs. The Kings hanging in there, hanging tough um, against the Sharks. But the Sharks proving just a little bit too strong with a 21 points to 12 win over the Kings. And the Blues going down to the Mighty Bulls, as we pretty much expected. Not sure a lot of people went for that. Um, quite a tough prediction there, but uh, some of the stability factors are starting to come out again. And a little bit wobbly, Jerome. How is it that, that, that uh, um, some of those teams that we saw do so well, the wheels come off the bus, the Crusaders going down, the Bull, uh, Blues going down, the Cheetahs a complete 180. Yeah, the, uh, the talk about the Cheetahs, JP. Uh, the Cheetahs are known for a side that travel well, mm. and they've just shown it. And one thing that I'm disappointed for them is I think they had lots of chances to get their bonus points, and they just um, they just decided to kick for poles on the last, which I thought they were mauling well. They could have gone for their bonus point because there's no ways that. Uh, the other team could have catch up with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was a bit disappointing for them. And then, yeah, the other results were also a big surprise. The Bulls and, uh, and, uh, and the Blues in Auckland. <coughs> it was a big surprise for everybody, I'd say. Let's take a look now at the combined log. The Brumbies are on top of the Bulls, the Chiefs, the Sharks, the Reds, the Blues, the Kings, the Waratahs, the Crusaders. There you see the Stormers on 10. Nice to have them back in the mix. Hurricanes, the Rebels, the Cheaters, the Highlanders. Yeah, so there we, we see that. Okay, folks, so um, of course you wanted a uh, chance to win for yourself an official um, uh, hamper from the official sports nutrition supplier of the uh, Western Bronze Rugby Stormers and the DHL Stormers if you want to win yourself an Evox hamper. Let's take a look at that now. Uh, you want to win yourself the during, it's the super carbohydrate. If you want to win for yourself the after, it's the rapid recovery. These two products are up for grabs. Let me just turn that for the camera. Always difficult seeing the camera where we are. And of course, don't forget, right before we're in any match, or if you uh, happen to be on a bicycle like Morgan Newman, who was cycling in the August tour, uh, Cytocrank gets you going. Morgs, how did your August go? I just didn't go too badly. Um, I, wrote, I wrote for charity. I wrote for charity called Breathe Easy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it went really well. We 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 busy working on donations now, and things are looking good. So my legs are not feeling that great. Tell us a little bit about Breathe Easy. Um, Breathe Easy is a charity that um, they they provide tracheotomies for children, so it allows the children who are used used to being hospital bound to be able to 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 go home, and then there's the moms to look after them with the with the use of this tracheotomy. So it's a Red Cross Children's Hospital. It's at Red Cross Children's Hospital. Right. And yeah, I mean, it's just how did you come up with this? Um, how did you come up with this concept as a a charity? Uh, look, Jeps, we, we, I mean, it was, it was a charity that was close to my brother's heart and my brother passed on. So I just, you know, um, it's something that I've been always wanting to get involved in. And so right. we decided that this year, I think it's, it's definitely, you know, for a good cause. And, and yeah, so we're busy raising money for that and, and looking forward to people donating. And if people want to donate, how do they do that? If people want to donate, they can, they can um, go into the website. There's a, a Breathe Easy website you can go and check out. 
And then you can also go to Just Giving. It's uh, justgiving.com forward slash A N A R T E Y. A-N-A-A-N-A-R-T-E-Y. Okay, we'll put that up on the screen underneath you there, folks. So you can see here's the, the website and name and now if, we're, if you wanted to donate to Breathe Easy. And then, yeah, people can donate that way. And yeah, we just, I mean, any donation, big or small, will, will, be, will, be, you know, will be appreciated. And we're hoping to send more kids who have this problem, we're mostly hoping to send more kids home, you know, sort of with, in, with their mom's care instead of being hospital bound. Oh, well, listen, I think what you and your, and your mates did, of course, um, in, in honor of your brother, um, I think you guys did a fantastic job to get together and pick a charity like that. Um, even though I know that you could hardly walk the next day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen, even, sit, even sitting here is a little bit of trouble. Yeah. But yeah, all for a good cause, uh, not complaining. Good cause. <laughs> well, the next time, make sure that you have more rapid recovery. So folks, if you want to win for yourself this Evox Hamper, a rapid recovery, a supercarbon, and a cytocrank, just tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Let's take a look at last week's winner, of course, won for themselves an Evox Hamper and a set of double tickets. Congratulations, Travis Shepard. You win for yourself, or you did win for yourself, the Hamper and a set of a double tickets. Congratulations. And as I say, once again, if you want to win for yourself this little Hamper, cell phone out, double three two eight zero. Evox is uh, what you need to do. Let's take a look now at how we did in the Super Brew predictions and how things uh, went over the weekend. Um, well, there you go, Miss Piggy, players and poses. Congratulations, Miss Piggy. You go straight to the top with your best performance. And ST for life, the man with the biggest back, obviously went all the way down. Celebrity panel, players or poses, how did we do there? Who went uh, up the most? And of course, I must say that in this case, um, going up the most doesn't mean much. <laughs> <laughs> Going up the most doesn't mean much, all right? I'm currently not doing very well in Super Brew, but I'm proud enough to be wearing my hat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen, one of these days, one of you will climb the Super Brew rankings as high as the mighty JP. <laughs> Super Brew rankings, Morgs, there you go, there's your cap. I know that you absolutely oh, love thanks, Jeff. Let's take a look at the Super 15 fixtures coming up this weekend. All right, there you go. It's the Highlanders, then the Hurricanes, the Warriors, and the Cheetahs, the Kings, and the Chiefs. The Crusaders take on the Bulls, the Reds, and the Force, and the Sharks, and the Brumbies. We, of course, we know it is a, um, a ho an, a, an away match for the Stormers. So they'll be having a little bit of bye. Jerome, the guys will be looking to take a bit of a breather this weekend. No, JP, you would think they would, eh? But um, uh, yesterday, they had a big session, which they called the Strong Men, and the guys were running and training hard. So you would so you would say like after a game like that, but except the guys was were injured, all the guys were training hard. So they've got still training up until Thursday, and then they're off. Take a couple of days off. Yeah. Morgs, how much of a blow will the loss of Brian Abana be for uh, Alistair? Look, James, I think both on and off the field, Brian is Brian has had an impact on the Stormers. So on the field with his performances, and off the field, I think you know he's one of the leaders, one of the senior guys in the side who gives a lot of advice and with a lot of his experience, you know, it's obviously valuable. So I think it'll be a big blow to the Stormers, but whoever comes in, I'm sure, you know, will be, will be capable. I think Gerard van Heerfer looks like, the, looks like the, the man with the shoe in, being the guy that comes off the bench, always in place of Brian. So he looks to come in, but he's, you know, also quite a bit of experience coming from the Bulls and that kind of thing. So, yeah, maybe he can live up to, to the hype that he, that he came to Cape Town with yeah. and, and, you know, fill, the, fill the, the void that Brian has left. Well, it does look like, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, quite frankly, <laughs> We just beat the best team. So what can we expect? I mean, we beat the best team without uh, Scott Berger, without Ibn Etzebet. Brandon Banner went off. You know, you've got to give the Stormers credit, Mustache. Yeah, no, but they got the, you know, and there's some good guys that, that didn't play, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, they should have no problems yeah. running for the next couple of weeks, hopefully. And you, I mean, even on sat Saturday, we're not playing. They can move up three places. Yeah. Because I expect all those three top the guys on top of them to lose their game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You expect that? Yeah. Well, we'll take a look at your Super Rue predictions next week and see how you did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Morgs, uh, have a great uh, rugby weekend. Yeah, thanks, James. Lots of action. Stormers are not playing, so we can get out and go and support some of our local club rugby, Vodacom Cup, Community Cup games. Yeah, Jerome, same to you. Have a good one. Yeah, thanks, JP. Game you're going to this weekend? I'm going to Vodacom Cup out there, and then I'm going to watch uh, Belleville in Belhar. Yeah. It's uh, also going to be a good game, so I'm going there. I hope, I hope I can go to one of the Community Cup games also, so 
I must just see how I can run around. A lot of rugby, a lot of you. Yeah, you have to sort of really coordinate it. <laughs> Mr. H, your game of choice over the weekend? I might pop up there at Bell and Bellaha. Bell and Bellaha. See how it goes there. Right, for the rest of you folks, you can join us, of course, at Milneton somewhere during the day. There's five or six teams uh, out at Milneton. And we'll be popping in at some stage at <coughs> City Park to go and watch um, the Vodacom side play against the uh, Sharks or Natal 15. For the rest, have yourself a fantastic rugby weekend. We catch you on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Cheers, bye.